Hello and welcome to Veterinary Instrumentation's latest episode of Under the Skin, a videography series introducing key devices and techniques used during orthopaedic surgery. In this episode, we are looking at the Tibial Tuberosity Advancement Procedure, or TTA, for stabilisation of the stifle following cranial cruciate ligament rupture. This episode explores the TTA procedure performed using a forkless plate. This is an evolution of the original TTA technique to alter the functional geometry of the joint during weight bearing. So, let's go under the skin. When the cranial cruciate ligament is ruptured, the stifle is unstable with abnormal cranial movement of the tibia relative to the femur during weight bearing. The TTA procedure stabilizes the stifle during weight bearing by altering the angle between the tibial plateau and the patella ligament to 90 degrees. This is achieved via creation of a straight osteotomy at the tibial tuberosity, followed by an advancement of the tibial tuberosity by a predetermined amount. The alteration of the angle between the patella ligament and the tibial plateau alters the direction of pull from the quadriceps muscle. This exerts a caudal force on the tibia that should negate cranial tibial thrust during weight bearing. Very accurate preoperative planning is essential, both to ensure correct positioning of the osteotomy and to determine the degree of advancement required. The patient is positioned in dorsal recumbency and the stifle joint is approached via a medial incision. A mini medial arthrotomy or arthroscopy should be performed in order to inspect the joint space. Particular attention must be paid to inspection of the menisci and in particular the medial meniscus. It is important to understand the intra-articular anatomy. Damaged areas of meniscus and remnants of the cruciate ligament should be debrided. The joint capsule is left open once the arthrotomy is complete. The patient is returned to lateral recumbency with the affected limb downward, although experienced surgeons may be happy to complete the procedure with the patient in dorsal recumbency. The plate size chosen during preoperative planning is checked against the tibial tuberosity for fit. Identify Gurdy's tubercle. Place a K-wire vertically from medial to lateral at the most proximal aspect of the tibia so that it exits laterally over Gurdy's tubercle. Medially, the K-wire identifies the location of the proximal osteotomy. Using a bone scribe or diathermy, mark the line of the osteotomy between the K-wire and the intended finish point of the osteotomy, where the distal concave curve of the base of the tibial tuberosity joins the main tibial cortex. Check plate size and positioning relative to the prescribed osteotomy mark and the tibial tuberosity. Remove the K-wire. Place Gelpi retractors in the joint to reflect the patella ligament cranially. This avoids damage during creation of the osteotomy. Use an oscillating saw to make the osteotomy using the prescribed line as your guide. The osteotomy is made bicortical along its entire length but ensure that the distal tibia cortex and periosteum are left intact. The appropriately sized spreader is inserted proximally into the osteotomy to advance the tibial tuberosity according to the preoperative calculation of the required advancement. This must be done slowly and carefully to avoid fracture of the tibial cortex at the distal end of the osteotomy. The depth of the caudal cut surface of the tibia is measured near to the proximal aspect of the osteotomy. This measurement indicates the length of cage required. If between measurements, select the shorter cage. Place the chosen length of cage into the proximal osteotomy for a trial fit, ensuring that it is not overly prominent on the lateral aspect. The cage must be more distal to the proximal cut surface of the tibia, cranially and caudally. When good cage fit has been confirmed, remove the cage and use the oval plate bender to contour the cage ears. The caudal ear is bent medially or outwards. The cranial ear is bent laterally or inwards. 
Position the cage in the osteotomy with the wide aspect proximal and the narrow aspect distal, approximately three millimeters distal to the most proximal aspect of the caudal cut surface. With the cage positioned correctly, compress the advanced tibial tuberosity using a large pair of single point reduction forceps placed cranial to caudal. Drill the pilot hole for the caudal cage screw using a 1.8 mm drill bit and drill guide. Aim caudal and distal. Measure the depth of the pilot hole and place a 2.4 mm titanium screw of the appropriate length. Now drill the pilot hole for the cranial cage screw using a 1.8 mm drill bit and drill guide. Aim for where there is most bone stock, usually slightly cranial and slightly distal. Ensure that the head of the screw engages the cage ear correctly. With the cage now secure, position the plate, ensuring that the screw holes proximally are clear of the cranial cage screw and ensuring good positioning of the distal plate holes relative to the tibial diaphysis. Gently contour the plate to match the contour of the tibia using the T-handle device and oval plate bender. Position the plate on the tibia so that the screw holes overlie the appropriate parts of the bone. Now drill the proximal plate holes in the tibial tuberosity using a 1.8 mm drill bit. Be very aware of the edge of the tibial cortex and the edge of the osteotomy. Direct the drill to maximize bone engagement. Measure the depth of the pilot holes and place 2.4 mm screws, ensuring good engagement of the plate hole with the screw head. Now drill the two distal plate holes in the tibial diaphysis using the appropriate drill bit for the size of screw intended. Either 2.7 mm or 3.5 mm screws may be used here. Be aware of the edge of the tibial cortex. As before, direct the drill to maximize bone stock. Measure the depth and place the screws, ensuring good engagement of the plate hole with the screw head. Post-operative radiographs must be taken following closure of the joint capsule and soft tissues. For further information on the VI range of instruments and implants for TTA surgery, please visit our website or contact our specialist technical support team. Join our online community by following our social media pages, keeping up to date with the latest releases of training and education material, as well as company updates.